how to overcome depression uh, that is the topic of today's video i'm going to give you guys my take on how to overcome depression i'm coming from the point of view of that uh, your life kind of sucks things aren't going well in your life whether it is financial family friends love life that is why uh, this is a dating advice for men channel uh, but i'm assuming that something is not working out in your life maybe a multitude of things aren't going well your life kind of sucks and that gives you good reason to feel depressed now if you are the type of person who is has everything going well and you're still feeling depressed i'm not sure if i can help you out i'm not a doctor i'm not a psychologist this is just youtube self-help self-development type stuff uh, but I have had to overcome some serious adversity, world-class adversity. I'm actually quite quite proud of the world-class adversity I've overcome. I'm going to give you a little bit of a down, down uh, a little bit of a overview of that, of one, one scenario and how I overcame it and how that can help you possibly overcome depression yourself. Uh, prevention's better than the cure in my opinion and I'm going to give you some tips that helped me get through some seriously difficult uh, times. But before we kick it off, I'm Dave and this channel is dedicated to giving you no BS, novel, dating advice for the modern man. Top link in the description and you can check out my website. Um, I teach men cold approach, how to cold approach women in any situation in life. Uh, this is dating advice for men. Um, just in case you've found this video and you're coming from the search engine somehow um, still happy that you watched the video that's perfectly okay with me uh, but I'm, keep in mind that this is a service that I'm providing which is cold approach dating advice for men so you're depressed I'm not a doctor I'm not a psychologist I'm just gonna give you my tips my advice and how I overcame um, depression myself Prevent and, and prevented myself from becoming depressed um, and this is how I did it. So to start with, um, I obviously came from the ghetto. Um, Russell Crowe made a documentary. Russell Crowe, the famous actor, made a, a documentary called um, The Bra Boys. Uh, that's where I came from. An absolute hole of a place. Um, and uh that's where i came from i'm not going to talk too much about issues that i suffered from as a child everybody would argue a lot of people have childhood problems i'm going to talk about real problems as an adult where serious things happened i'm going to give you guys a little bit of a, a down low of that uh but the first thing i'd like to say is that uh if your life sucks and you're struggling in life the number one thing that you I don't recommend you do and I'm not a doctor is uh, seek counseling or a, a psychologist um, talking about your problems doesn't solve your problems to be honest and I noticed that when I, I spoke to a psychologist or a counselor they weren't able to give me solutions to my problems so they didn't really solve anything um, that's part of the reason as well why I think that coaching, coaching with, with someone like myself does help is because we give solutions to problems and actionable advice. Now, a, a psychologist is like, oh, your life sucks. Oh, how does that, how do you feel about your life sucking? Oh, your life sucks because, and you feel bad about that. Oh, let's talk about it and make you feel worse about it. <laughs> Um, it seems like the most useless thing to really be doing unless they're giving you proper advice. Now, for instance, I'll give you give you a little bit of an overview of one situation where I I hit rock bottom. Uh, the my left hip started to wear out. I found myself disabled at work. I went on a waiting list to get my left hip replaced. I found myself in chronic pain, extreme chronic pain. Couldn't really sleep at night. I uh, couldn't think properly, couldn't walk upstairs or downstairs. I couldn't sit for more than half an hour without, because it was bone on bone in my left hip. But I went on a waiting list to get my hip replaced. And I was in, under, uh, I went to do uh, private health insurance in, in a private hospital. 
um, and and I was on a waiting list of 12 months to get the hip replaced, especially at a young age. I think I was 28, 29. Uh, what you want to do is you want to get a, a good surgeon, go private, make sure you do it properly. Now, my employer at the time discovered that I needed a hip replacement, knew about it, and the day that I brought my medical certificate in, two weeks before I had my hip replacement, I come into work, I'm like, oh, this is just a formality, right? Here's my medical certificate. I'm going to be away for probably three to six months or something like that. I'm going to have a hip replacement in two weeks. And they said, get out. Get out right now. I was like, excuse me? They're like, get out. I was like, excuse me? We're calling the police unless you get out. I was like, what? We're going to fill, uh, empty out all of uh, your desk and take all your belongings. Get out right now. I was like, excuse me? It was literally a human rights violation, what I suffered from. Uh, they kick. They kicked me out. They stole a month sick pay from me because I was disabled, um, and kicked me out so that they didn't have to pay my sick leave. Um, I didn't have a job to return to, so for two weeks I was waiting to have a hip replacement. That's only the beginning. <laughs> uh, the chronic pain that I suffered from over the the twelve months leading up to that. Um, uh, Friends, family, they discovered that I was disabled and abandoned me. I was abandoned pretty much by a lot of people. I did have some close friends that would, would still talk to me and hang out with me and things like that. But uh, my friend group and my family had collapsed because I was disabled. Seriously, uh, these things do happen. Uh, the two weeks leading up to my hip replacement... Um, I was preparing to have the operation and my the girl I was seeing slept with some guy down the street. <laughs> now, she it wasn't, a, it wasn't a serious thing, but it was just another nail in the coffin. Uh, the two people that were renting the room from me, um, I don't know whether they decided because I was disabled, I was going in for a hip replacement, they just wanted out. Um, and they just decided, they said, look, we're leaving in two weeks. We're going to find somewhere else to live. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> Um, uh, so I had to pay for the rent for their bedroom until I, f I found someone to replace them. Another financial issue as well. My car's parked out the front of my place and someone accidentally crashes into my car but doesn't leave any notes and does like a hit and run and, run, hit and, run and destroys my car out the front. Another financial issue. I couldn't drive anywhere from then on. My dog, who was getting a little bit old, died um it was an older dog so it wasn't like a, a big big deal but it was still just another thing that went wrong my grandfather died this all happened within like a couple of weeks uh he was old um so it wasn't a terribly bad thing but it, it was just like another bad thing that happened now i found myself with all of these issues uh and going in for a hip replacement I went in for the hip replacement, I came out, you can't really walk for three months, um, it's a major surgery, it's a serious, serious problem, and I had every right to be depressed, okay, so I've got my story out of the way, and for you guys at home, hopefully, I've set the scene, I have, at that situation, just, just switching, so under those circumstances, I, I had every right to be depressed, right? And so if you're suffering from uh, depression right now, you kind of, your life kind of sucks and you, you have every right to be depressed, um, I would say under those circumstances, I had every right to be depressed as well. I think more so in, in that particular moment, I found myself uh, more shocked than anything. I'm, I found myself going, like sitting there going, did that just happen? Is this really happening? I couldn't believe it. And under those circumstances, I could only, the, I thought, how am I going to get myself out of this situation? No one's going to come and save me. Superman isn't coming to save me. Uh, no friends or family is going to come and uh, save me. I have to save myself. There's only one way out of this. And that's me taking some form of action to get out of the problem. Again, then we get back to the whole idea of speaking to a counselor or, or a psychologist. Um, that's time that I can't spend or I can't burn that time up 
literally light it up on fire while talking to a psychologist or, or a counsellor to complain about my life situation uh, because that one the time's valuable two talking about it and feeling bad about my situation is only going to make me make things worse for me now if you're a man that's watching this you're aware that no one's going to come and save you life is a it's a mean world out there it's a mean and nasty world out there and if you don't save yourself no one will sitting around and uh, feeling bad for yourself isn't going to get you out of the hole that you're in I had major financial, medical, uh, all of these uh, financial problems, uh, medical bills, etc. Keeping a roof over my head, I had all these problems that I needed to solve, and worrying about it wasn't going to uh, get them to go away. <laughs> you can't wish them away. You can't think them away. You have to actually solve them. So I went in for a hip replacement. They literally cut my leg off, sewed it back together, and. The solution, and hopefully this is helpful for you guys at home, was to, to solve one problem at a time and not, for, not think about anything else. Now, I found myself just focusing purely on my health. I went in to, to do the hip replacement. I get out. Um, they offered me, uh, I think it was antidepressants and serious painkillers. And I instantly said no to both of those things. I said, I'll take uh, Panadol or Aspirin. Um, these are kind of really weak painkillers. Uh, they're not really the type of painkillers that you should be taking after a hip replacement, but I did. I didn't take any serious painkillers or any medication when I came out of my hip replacement. I wanted to be clean. I didn't want to... Uh, I, I, I realized at that point, I didn't need to compound my problems. Now, for you guys at home, if you have problems, you want to mitigate those problems. You have financial issues. You want to try to reduce the amount of money that's going out, reduce the amount of expenditure, um, and that that encompasses everything in life. So there's a lot of pitfalls there where if things can get uh, in your life are bad, they can get a lot worse by making bad decisions. There's a very good chance I could have been on uh, some sort of uh, antidepressants or medication for my brain. It would have hampered my problem-solving ability, slowed me down. I would have had to pay for medication that really, me personally, if you guys need it, that's fine. But for me personally, it would have slowed me down. Uh, pain medication, there's a high probability of getting addicted to these pain kills, especially when you're disabled, people will give you... I had access to everything. Uh, I could literally ask the doctor. The doctor was asking, like begging me to take stronger pain medication. Let's just put it that way. I had the option of taking the most, uh, the strongest whatever pain medication they had on offer. <laughs> let's, just, let's just put it that way. And the, my doctor was like, why won't you take it? I was like, I don't want to get addicted to this stuff. I've got enough problems as it is. Mitigate the problems, number one. And I focus purely at that stage on uh, my health. So I get out and it was purely doing my rehabilitation, uh, walking. Uh, I didn't miss any exercise. I didn't miss any stretch. Walking to the letterbox, going up and down the stairs, doing my little stretches and everything. It took about three months until I could walk properly. At the end of that, um, I... I, I started to walk okay and I got myself back on track. I realized that mentally I had gone through hell um, and I, I'd not quite solved those problems yet, but mentally I wasn't quite up to scratch. So what did I do? I looked in my bank account and I thought, how much money do I have left? Okay, if I go on a holiday now, I go on a proper slay session. You guys that follow me, this is a dating uh, YouTube channel. As soon as I finished my rehab and I started to be able to walk again, I made sure that the doctor said that it was okay for me, that I could fly. I flew away <laughs> and I went on a holiday. If you want to read my book, my autobiography is somewhere there. You can. It's called The Disabled Casanova. I found myself deciding 
to make sure that I was in a, a good mental state by flying away on a holiday. I went on a holiday. I went on a, a sleigh, se sleigh session to sleep with as many girls as I could, which is the only reason why I like to travel, to be honest. And I came back, I think it was one or two weeks later, um, far more fresh. I could walk again and I was ready for battle. So technically I had solved my health problems. I focused on one thing at a time. Uh, the physical health, then the mental health. I solved those things. Uh, going on the holiday, solo holiday to pick up girls. It solved, it solved it radically. I came back ready to go to war. When I got back, the one thing that I was going to focus on at that point was money. I had massive medical bills to pay. I had rent to pay. I had all of these other issues that I had not bothered to look at for probably three to four months that I was recovering from all, all my health problems. I could walk now. So what I started to do was apply to every possible job I could get. Everything. I got rejected from everything. And it was a 24 hour a day obsession to focus on money. I looked in my house, what can I sell, what can I flip? Uh, if you are depressed, you have major problems, your life sucks, one problem at a time, I focused on my health once. I focused and s tried to solve it, pretty much solved it. Mental health, once, solved it. Financial health, financial problems, they needed to be solved. All of my focus went on to one thing and one thing only people say that you people say that you can't really multitask and I tend to believe that especially when you've got major issues and sure when you're f you're solely focused on one thing at a time every other aspect of your life falls away but if you do a good enough job and you go hardcore at it you can solve it well enough that can give you a bit more time to juggle all the other balls and keep them up in the air in your life Financial issues was the next one that I needed to solve. So what did I do? I sold everything that I could possibly find. I even have some photos of uh, the girls that were living with me uh, finding washing machines and ovens and uh, like dishwashers and things like that and putting them in trolleys and I couldn't pick them up and move them because I still wasn't able to do anything like that I was still like not a hundred percent from my hip replacement um, and I had like a couple of girls like pushing a trolley with like an oven in it and I'll take it home and then I'll try flip these things online uh, for any sort of cash that I could get get my hands on uh, applied for any job there there was I found myself working in a um it was the only job I could get at that stage, and that was washing dishes for 10 hours a day for $10 an hour. This wasn't even 10 years ago, guys. So if you think $10 isn't very much, you're right. Uh, it still was nothing back then. It was very close to being, I think it might have been, it might have been under the minimum wage, um, and I was just getting paid cash. It was the only thing that anyone would be willing to pay me. So I took it. $100 for one day, standing on my feet washing dishes all day for a, a little uh, uh, RSL, like sort of pub type thing. Then I found myself uh, another part-time job that I could do midweek, which was um, delivering pizzas with my beaten up car. $14 an hour, $1 per delivery. And um, it was better than nothing. I had no choice but to take it. There was no other jobs that I could have done. So I was taking, I was, I was uh, exchanging time for money, which was the only option I had at that stage. But financially, that was the situ situation I was in. I needed to take anything I could get. Then eventually I found myself a full-time job concreting. Now, uh, I was working six days a week. I'd wake up at 5 a.m. in the morning, get uh, get to the job site at about 6 a.m. and then would have to be on the construction site around 7 to 7.30 a.m. We're doing that uh, six days a week. 
uh, sometimes finished work at 2 to 4 p.m. depending on the concrete pour that we were doing at that day. Um, so I started working at that stage. I was working full time, six days a week, uh, two or three nights a week delivering pizza. I had to, st I actually got fired from washing the dishes, which was on a Saturday, luckily enough. Um, and then I decided that on a Sunday, I'm going to start up my own little landscaping business. So I found myself working seven days a week. Uh, Monday to Friday, I would wake up at 5 a.m. Uh, at work at six, on site at seven, get home, finish work at two or four, get home about three or four or five, depending on the time, have an hour or probably an hour at home to have a shower, get ready, and then go to the second job, um, delivering pizzas and sometimes finish at like nine or 10 p.m. at night, get home, <laughs> get maybe five, six hours sleep and do it all again. I was doing that for seven days a week. And then I started thinking, okay, well, I've got all this money flowing in. I'm starting to pay my medical bills. I've got a roof over my head. I've got people renting out the rooms. Um, I need to step it up again. Let's go hardcore. We're good. Let's go hard or go home. <laughs> um, then I started studying two nights a week. Um, and so I found myself uh, waking up at 5 a.m. in the morning, getting to sleep about 10 or 11 p.m. at night. Um, and doing that almost every single day. And uh, I did that for about 10 months until uh, the physical labor wore out my right hip. And at that point, I was in a lot of pain. Um, and I went and got an x-ray. It turns out they said that my right hip needed to be replaced. So I had about 10-ish months of working seven days a week. And I saved about $1,000 a week approximately at that point. I was ahead. I worked my way out of the financial situation. Um, and then I found myself in another hole, which isn't very good, but this is, this is life. Um, when you're in a tough situation, no one's going to save you. You need to save yourself. Uh, the goal, the, the point of, that I'm trying to make here is that I could have at that point, after the first tip replacement with all of those financial and other issues, I could have just sat at home and um, played video games and woe is me and um, got more depressed, but that wouldn't have solved anything. I could have went to a counselor and cried about my problems, but that wouldn't have solved anything. As a man, you really should be solving problems and that comes with a lot of action. Now, um, if you want a little bit more information about my life, my life uh, you can check out the book it's um the disabled casanova um it's a real life story and um yeah it's pretty hardcore but the thing is hopefully this inspires someone or motivates someone that might be depressed and their life kind of sucks um to just say look you can get out of it and I, I've, there's a very good chance that whatever you're going through might not be as epic as what i was going through um, all the better. It's probably better for you to not be in as bad of a situation that I was in. It's probably a good thing, actually, because <laughs> then you don't have to suffer from all those issues. Um, but a lot of people that get depressed, they have their life sucks. It really does. And they're justified in being depressed. Uh, but being depressed and not taking action is not going to solve any of your problems. And that is a big issue, isn't it? So I would recommend that you fight your way out of the problems, um, solve them. And I kind of solved my financial issues back then. Um, sure, the right hip went and I needed to have my right hip replaced. Several operations later, um, it's all been done. But that is life something happens you you get back up and you get knocked back down you can't control a lot of these things you just need to keep getting up and hope that you can stand up long enough without someone knocking you down or something knocking you down um, long enough that you can enjoy your life the thing is once you're up if you keep fighting you can get real you can get so far ahead in life where you can be very successful and i'll say that a lot of the most successful people in life um, they were forced to start fighting 
um, this is why you got a lot of people that come from lower to middle class where they start fighting when they're younger then when they become successful they f they don't go on cruise mode they continue fighting and become super successful um, and if you are depressed and you find yourself in a bad situation your life sucks you gotta f it's just one thing that you need to focus on at a time so one thing put all of your focus into one thing at a time and hopefully you'll be able to get your way out of it. So hopefully this has been helpful to you guys and I haven't rambled too much. Um, yeah, and if you're a single guy out there and the main reason you wanted to watch this video was because you were having trouble with women, um, check out my book first. And um, you can also check out the website and sign up to do some cold approach coaching with me. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.